family, fishing and fun is the best way to describe a boat with lots of plush seating that can catch a dolphin in the morning, take the family to the sandbar during the day, and let you enjoy an evening cruise to your favorite waterfront restaurant. Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, we're featuring boats that can fish hard and keep your family comfortable. These are dual consoles in the 20 to 28 foot range, which may offer the most features in a multi-purpose boat with the least amount of compromise. Some key features to look for in this class are plenty of shade for the entire crew. A fiberglass hardtop will let you stay out on the water all day. With an open bow and large cockpit, it's easy to find a comfortable place for everyone to sit. A tow bit for pulling water toys such as tubes or wakeboards will appeal to the kids. Aft-facing seats will allow you to watch the person being towed or let you keep an eye on your spread of baits while waiting for a strike. A cockpit set up for entertaining complete with a sink and freshwater faucet a dive ladder at the stern for making it easier to get in and out of the water. Forward seating keeps the rest of the family happy and comfortable while you're fishing. If your boat has to pull double duty as a fishing machine and a family retreat, you may want to look at a dual console in the 20 to 28 foot range that will let you do both activities at the same time. Combining comfort and fishability may make a dual console the best boat for you. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as we feature three dual consoles that can satisfy the fishermen and the family at the same time. Scout 245 Dorado, Sailfish 275 DC, and the WorldCat 295. They'll be conducting walkthroughs, test drives, and reviewing key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this episode of Best Boat. I'm Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sportsman Magazine. And I'm Rick Riles, program director of Florida Sportsman Radio. What we've got for you today is a series of boats, they're dual consoles, and I've really been looking forward to this episode because for so long now, we've all been fishing out of center consoles, and that's the boat you take offshore, that's the boat you fish inside, and you look at a dual console and you think it's more of just a family boat, but you know what? I was wrong. These boats really can hold their own against the center consoles. You're right, Dave, and you know, it's funny. We started offshore in dual console boats way back when you and me and Noah were the only boats out. Well, let me tell you, when center consoles came, we just all gravitated to it. But there's some compromises. Think about this. Your number one passenger, which for you or I, of course, is our wives, has two options. She can either sit in front of the console, she's not getting as good a ride as you are because we talk about it all the time, the best seat's in the back, or she can sit in the back of the boat. Well, the problem with that is she can't see, okay? If you've got a dual console, she has the exact same area that you do that is just separate from her. She's got her own helm chair, if you will, her own windshield. She's comfortable. I tell you what, you balance the weight in a dual console when you put somebody on each side. Works like a champ. Well, what impressed me most about these boats we've run so far is it's like driving your car. You have a windshield. If you close that walkthrough, and most of them have a little door that'll close off, you don't get hardly any uh, indication of wind in your face. You got to look at the speedometer to know that you're moving. You pull the seat up, it's so comfortable to run a long distance, especially if we were running to the islands, a dual console would be a much comfortable ride than, it would, than over a center console. Well, it sure would, it'd be a much drier ride because like you say, you've got the windshield in front of you, you close the door, the water's not coming through. It's amazing how much that affects you when you're out on the water day. You, if you're getting spray, you feel like it's rougher. If you're not getting any spray, you're pretty comfortable. You can actually be more comfortable in a little bigger sea on a dual console boat with windshields in front of you than you can on a center console. Well, you can. And the three boats that we brought today really shows a full spectrum of these boats. We have the smaller one, which is the 245 uh, Dorado made by Scout. And it's a great little boat. It's got all the features of the big boat, or the bigger two boats that we brought, but just in a smaller package. Then our middle boat we brought was a Sailfish 275. Still a dual console, still laid out like all the other boats, but just a little bit bigger size. Now we're twin power with a Scout single. And of course the big boat that you rode in today was the 295 Worldcat dual console, which was huge. Dave, that was one of my first experiences in cats. It's different. We're gonna go through them and we'll explain it all to you. Here's the message on cats. It's different. Well, it is, and you know my background. For 23 years, I've built cats, so I'm gonna have to be careful here not to be too biased. There's some things that cats do that are great, but there's a trade-off. There's other things that monohulls do better than a cat. So really, as we go through these boats, we'll talk about the difference. I won't be too biased on cats, at least I'll try not to be, but 
We'll show you the boats, we'll show you the interior layout, and really what these dual consoles are all about. They're really, really good boats. One other thing I really do like about this episode, the three things the boats do have in common. We've got super comfortable bow seating, we've got little tables for a picnic area, and we have huge cockpits. So if a guy does want to fish or he wants to dive, you've got plenty of room. Okay, I'm telling you what we're doing on this. Every episode we've done just about so far has been on fishing boats and how functional they are for the family. This week we flip it. Dave, I would call these family boats that are excellent to fish out of. That's the best way to describe it. You know what, let's go take a look at them. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Fishing is my passion. You can find me out on the water 300 days out of the year. I don't need a fishing license because I'm age 65 exempt. I do need it though, to pitch in and help keep our fisheries healthy. By purchasing a license, it supports research projects, wildlife enforcement, hatcheries, and much more. So my grandkids and future generations will be able to share this passion too. My name is Jim Harder and those are the reasons I do. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we'll be featuring 20 to 28 foot dual consoles. Dave and Rick started off with the Scout 245. Okay, Rick, this is a Scout Dorado 245. It's the smallest boat of the three that we brought today, but like you saw this morning, I was offshore and able to keep up with the other two larger boats with no issue whatsoever. And boy, did they do a good job of maximizing space on this boat. I keep thinking they've done everything they can do to a 24-foot boat. No, they haven't, Dave. This one's got some innovations you won't see anywhere else that I really like. You know, you mentioned it being a single engine. Dave, has got a 100-gallon fuel tank. It would be impossible to burn out that much fuel out of a four-stroke 300 in a single day. And really, you know, they've stuffed this boat completely full of features. Everywhere you look, there's something else. You've got an enclosed head, you've got plenty of storage, you can close off this little door in the windshield and you're totally protected. The one thing I do like about the windshield, it looks kind of large, but the way they sized it, when I'm standing, I can easily see over it, but when I sit down, I can see under it. So this bar right here doesn't get in your way. Dave, let's head up to the bow. They did some stuff with their bow seating up there. All right, Rick, the anti-skid is really, really aggressive, so getting on the boat, you got really good shore footing where you're not going to slip. Dave, you just hit on one of my favorite parts of the boat. All right, everybody likes bow seating. It's a great place to sit up here with your family and your wife or whatever, but to stand up here at a gaff of fish or anchor your boat or something, I'm a little unstable standing on a cushion. I love the way they have staggered this step. It's one step from here down to here into the cockpit of the boat ideal scenario for your bow area. Well, it does make it a lot easier, but then they went a step further too. This flips down and now it becomes a table. So <laughs> let's say you want to have a picnic lunch, you have cup holders, then where you want all your drinks in a built-in cooler. So once we sit down here, our drinks here, our sandwiches are here. I'm not sure we would move from this area unless maybe to fight a fish in the back. Yeah, let's work back because I want to talk about the dual consoles because I've been a center console guy all my life. But there are some things about this dual console layout I really like. I'm slowly becoming a convert myself. I really do like the comfort. Okay, Rick, we've got a lot of storage underneath the helm right here. But one feature I really like, if we're running in the rain, or let's say it's a winter time and it's cold, you close that wall and you shut this windshield, now you're totally protected from the elements. You're right, Dave. And let's be honest, and we need to put this word of caution out too. As great as it is setting up front, you don't want your kids sitting up front while you're running where you can encounter any kind of wave, even if it's a wake of a big boat passing you by. Well, Rick, you know what? A boat like this, you're going to take the family out. And if you're going to bring kids or your wife on board, there's a built-in head right Better behind Better bring the you. potty. Well, there's a big one here, and you got a lot of room under there. I was astounded, Dave, at the size of the head for a 24-foot boat. Well, this is a boat that you could take over to the Bahamas, because you're in that size now where if you wanted to cross in the summertime, you could. There's enough room under there to store everything you would take for a week if you were going over to Bimini or West End or something like that. Check out these helm seats on either side. They swivel, they slide, and they also become a bolster. So if you do want to stand, if you're in an area that's unfamiliar, maybe you're running shallow water, it's a comfortable place to lean if you want to get a oh, little bit more height. It's just like a rocket launcher. It's just like laying back against a rocket launcher in a center console, Dave. I'm telling you, I, I like the balance of having people on each side. This is going to be your most comfortable place for your passenger well laid out. Let me show you something about this live well. When I first looked at it, I'm thinking, eh, not so much. But inside, the corners are all rounded. 
Your bait will swim in a continuous motion. It's a good place for it. It's a little further back, makes it ride a little better, and it's well shaped. You did a good job on the live well. Well, they did. You know what? And if you're lucky enough to catch a fish, I'm standing on a really, really nice large fish box that you can use for either your fish or storage of drinks or even maybe dry storage. If you're diving, it's a great place to put your dive gear. So they've really thought about the fishermen and the family when they put this boat together. I don't know who put this boat together. They spent a lot of time doing it, I can promise you that. But look what they've done here to get you access to the back of the boat. We've done a lot of flip up stern seats. This one's probably mm -hmm. the easiest one that I've ever operated. And if I'm coming in from diving or from snorkeling or let's say we pulled a water toy because on our hard top here, we've got a tow bit. And it's up high, so if you want a wakeboard behind this boat, if you want to pull a tube or a hydro slide or something like that, they've taken that into consideration. Your top's super strong, you have a place to attach to, but getting out of the water, couldn't be easier than Two that. Two easy steps. You're back in, flip the seat back up, set the family down, you're ready to go. And when this flips up, now you've got a really, really comfortable couch that goes all the way across from port to starboard. Dave, it's the Scout Dorado 245. It may be the smallest boat we looked at today, what a great job maximizing every square inch. Well, it's the only boat that we brought with single horsepower, but you know what? That's all it needs. That single 300 is plenty of power to push this 24 and a half foot boat. So if you want the advantages of a dual console, be able to put the whole family, but keep the size small, the Scout 245 may be your best boat. Stay tuned for this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Welcome back. Here's Dave and Rick with this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. Well, the best part of a dual console boat is having the bow seating. But if you're going to put people up here and you're underway, there's some safety concerns you need to know about. You're right. Dual console boats speak to family and family, of course, speak to kids. There's some basic rules for kids. First off, don't let them sit on the bow with their feet hanging off the front, okay? Make sure they have a handrail to hold on to. Make sure they're not blocking your vision. And if they're under 13 years of age, they better be wearing a PFD. Well, the PFD and the feet hanging off the bow, those are two things that you're going to get a ticket on if you go past the FWC. As well you should. People do not realize how fast things can go wrong on the water. Well, like we've said, it's a great place to sit, but in rough conditions or even in calm conditions crossing a boat wake, somebody can get hurt up here. So make sure you slow the boat down, give your passengers on the bow a comfortable ride. Dave, now we're on the Sailfish 275. This boat screams to me weekend getaway. I'm telling you, this boat could put Holiday Inn Express out of business. It really could. And you know, we're going from a 245 to a 275, and you think, okay, well, it's three feet bigger. This boat is a lot bigger than the Scout we looked at. It is, Dave. A lot of the same features. Love the front table. We'll get into all that. All right, with a pair of 150s, this boat has all the performance you need. It does, Dave. It's a real good performer. But once again, it's all about maximizing your space, utilizing the square footage you've got to work with. Some of the features that they've done in this boat really do speak to that. First off, you know I love my big boat feel. A big boat anchor winch makes, makes it a lot easier when you're gonna make a lot of stops during the day. Well, it does. And if you look at the bow configuration, where the Scout had just a little flip down table, this one has a full size table that four people could sit around and really have a picnic lunch if you were pulled up to the sandbar or something Which like is that. kind of what a dual console is all about. It I really mean, is. a dual console speaks to being versatile. And what this boat does, it makes it very comfortable for you and your buddies. Let's hop in, let's go fishing. You and the family hop in, let's go to the sandbar, let's go to dinner. You can do an awful lot of things with this boat. Let's start looking at some of the features. Well, the first thing I like that Sailfish did, all of these compartments up here are insulated. So if I want to carry drinks, if I want to carry food, let's say we're going to the islands for a week, which you could easily do in this boat, you can take all the food you need for an entire week. But if you're going to take the boys out fishing and you happen to get in that big school of dolphin, you've got plenty of places to keep them fresh. All right, Rick, once I get behind this helm, the only thing I can relate this to, it's got the feel of driving an RV. It's super comfortable, but it is big. 
You're right, David. Over here, you've got a companion bench that two people can sit on pretty comfortably. You can sit back to back. You can sit 45 facing backwards. Let's say you're trolling and you want to watch your baits. Or you can lay it all the way down, and it becomes another day bed. It does. And Sailfish is a fishing boat by Heritage. And let me tell you something. They have storage everywhere you look. Look at this big storage hatch we've got in the deck down here. You can take an awful lot of stuff on this boat, close yourself off in the elements. It's comfort. As we work our way into the cockpit, you're going to see more features that you really like. Well, you will, but before we go any further past the helm, you've got a lot of storage under the driver's side, but this enormous door that opens up leads to a giant head. When this thing opens up, you've got a full finished head that, yes, you would go in while the boat's underway. All right, Rick, we talked earlier about the seat pot on this side of the boat, but when you go to the starboard side, if this boat has to double as a cocktail barge, check this unit out. Let me tell you something else. When I think about this boat, Dave, I just keep thinking about going to the Bahamas for the weekend. You know, ice over there is at least a dollar a pound. How sweet will it be having a 12-volt refrigerator to keep your beer cold? Well, that would work. Plus, you've got a built-in cooler right here. So if you're away from the dock and you don't have a 12-volt source, you still got a place to keep your stuff cold right there. Dave, we didn't sacrifice any room back here. This is a big cockpit. You can run a lot of lines out of here. You've got a live well on this side, which you know you like, but You've got a dive door over here. As much as we dive and get in and out of the water, to me, having a dive door over there is just as important as having a live well on the oh, side. Bite your tongue. Nothing's as important as a good live well. It's got to be round, got to have good water flow. Sailfish has got it both in that little well. We always say the first thing a boat customer should ask is, why do I want a boat? Well, you have to assess how many people are about to be with you. If I had four or five kids, a center console would not do me nearly as well as what a dual console like this 275 Sailfish would. But we've said it before, this is a boat that the wife can look at, and if she likes it, the husband can look at it, and he likes it, the whole family can enjoy it. The fishing buddies will like it. If you like to be able to take a lot of people and do a lot of things with them, this 275 Sailfish might be the best boat for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Florida Sportsman, the source for fishing in the outdoors since 1969. Florida's largest fishing and outdoors magazine. Year-round TV with real-time Florida Sportsman and Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Florida's number one online resource. Over 8 million page views a month. Live reports from the water every Saturday morning. Hands-on instruction, seminars and demonstrations. Books, charts and more. Become part of the Florida Sportsman community today. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew stayed at Pirates Cove Resort and Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we're featuring 20 to 28 foot dual consoles. All right, Rick, this is the 295 Worldcat. And if we were doing big sport fish boats, that's your world. Now that we're in a catamaran, this is my world. This was your first ride on one. Give me your impression. It's different. It's completely different. Don't be ready for anything else you've experienced before. It rides very good, but boy, what an adjustment when you go to make a turn. The boat leans the wrong way. Well, it's like you're on a set of rails and you're not gonna get any slide out of the boat. She's gonna come around in a hard turn. And really, the, the maneuvers that we were doing earlier today, that's not something you would normally do. We just did that to show what the boat is capable of doing. But Dave, I gotta tell you, every time we came up to a wave or a wake like from another boat or something, I'd find myself bracing myself as I always do. Not never, a bit. Never felt? Nope, and you won't. You that's, won't. that's gotta be the beauty of cats. But you know what impresses me and impresses everybody about cats, Dave, let's be honest. They're big. I mean, you look at the difference. If you've got a mono hull boat, by the time we're up here, you and I are touching each other. We got a lot more room up here than we would a mono hull of the same size. Well, especially on a dual console. This is the largest of the three that we brought. It's got the most room, mainly because their beam does go all the way forward. Now, by that same token, that's gonna be a little harder to tow down the road. So it's like we've always said, every boat's a little bit of a give and take. Dave, you know me, I can never get enough storage. We've got storage up front. What we do, and as we work our way into the cockpit, if you look underneath this U-shaped seating, I've got a large insulated cooler on this side that could be a fish box or for drinks. And to make your heart warm, rod, rod storage. Plenty of rod storage along here. I take my bottom rods, my trolling rods, my kite rods, I'm ready to go. 
Well, as we work aft, we'll get behind the windshield, we'll look at the helm, then I want to show you this enormous side of the console that has a head, and you can actually step down inside the boat, and that's one thing cats are good about. As you get to the outside, you actually step down into the sponson, so it allows you to go down inside the boat and get a lot more headroom. All right, Rick, once we get in the helm area, we've got the same wind door that closes with the windshield, so you're all protected from the elements if you get into the rain like we may get later or in the wintertime when you get that cold air coming in. I'll tell you what, World Cat also addressed one of my pet peeves. Dave, it doesn't do you any good on a boat to have a great big storage area unless it's got a big door. Check out the size of this door. When you got to put all your safety equipment and your fenders and your dive tanks and everything, doesn't do you any good to try and shove it through a little bitty door. I like the way they've accessed their storage down here. Well, as we work aft, WorldCats designed these two seats to be more than just seats. Behind this helm, I've got an insulated box. Great place for drinks, or let's say we're spear fishing or we're snapper fishing. Good place to put your smaller fish. Yeah, I like that, Dave. But let me tell you, this boat might get me divorced. This is a 12-volt refrigerator with drawers in it. For me, that'd be a perfect place to store your bait. Well, either way, you end up with this monster cockpit back here. A lot of guys can fish back here. You can get all your dive equipment back here. And this is really a good place for everybody to gather. If you're going to sit at a sandbar, if you're going to be on a reef fishing or whatever, there's a lot of room after this boat. There is, Dave. And I got to tell you, you put outriggers on this thing with a nine and a half foot beam, you are cutting a plenty wide path through the water. You're showing your base to a lot of fish. Well, Rick, everywhere you look on this World Cat, they've got built in features. You've got all kind of tackle storage on this side, leader storage on that side, but also under this helm seat and back here in the cockpit, they've taken their water separator, they've taken all of their pumps out of the bilge where they're going to be subjected to salt water, and they have them up here where you can access them easy and you can maintain them. What a dream to be able to fight your fish all the way around without worrying about fouling it in your props. Well, as you walk back on that platform, if you drop that ladder in the water, you got a real dive ladder there. You can crawl up with all of your gear on rather than handing it over the side. And with cats being as stable as they are at rest, that's the best place to get on and off the boat. All right, we talked about the manufacturers doing the little things that count. You come up on the ladder, you're all full of salt, your equipment's all salty, you got your freshwater wash down right there. Just squirt it off, you're good to go. This boat will carry more people than any other boat we looked at today. It also has a great advantage of being able to plane on a single engine. There's a lot of things to like about having the biggest boat. Well, we had talked about the helm areas being almost like twin consoles, and they are. You got a full step down on the port side, you got a lot of storage under the starboard side, and you got a lot of seating aft there for four people. You do, and at the same time, Dave, on a calm day, you can seat six people up front. This boat would still be comfortable with eight to ten people on it. All right, well, you know what? If you're looking at a boat that has a lot of yacht size amenities, but yet on a boat you can still trailer, this 295 DC WorldCat may be your best boat. If you're looking for the comfort amenities of a deck boat and the cockpit size of a much larger center console, then a dual console in the 20 to 28 foot range might just be the best boat for you. Well, if you decided that comfort is what you're looking for, a dual console may be just the boat. If you want more information, go to floridasportsman.com, go to our boating page, click on the best boat link, See more about these boats and the rest of the boats that we tested during this season of Best Boat. And we'll see you next week on Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Be sure to join us next week when we cover 20 to 27 foot pontoon boats on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Each month, turn to Florida Sportsman for the best in boating and fishing coverage.